Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my channel. My name is Paul, the Canadian Snowman, here with Geography Now, here with Sierra Leone. You guys are up on the list. I've definitely heard of this uh, country. I, I love the name. I just like, you know, this sounds cool. And yeah, we're going to jump right into it and learn a bunch of cool stuff. So anyways, before we do, please hit that like and subscribe button below. I'd really appreciate it. Hope you guys are having an amazing day. And yeah. We're going to do this. Sierra Leone. All right. Three, two, one. Bam. Sierra Leone, or as the locals call it in short, Salon. One of the only three countries on earth founded by former slaves. <laughs> now, this is an interesting country that not a lot of people talk about. And if you know me, those are the countries I like researching the most. So grab a friend while watching because you won't want to see era this episode of <laughs> Leone. <laughs> You guys remember Jason. Thank you, Jason. He'll yeah. be in this episode occasionally, every so often. Every once in a while. Every so often. Yeah. Sierra Leone gets its name from the Portuguese word for lioness mountains, but little did they know what treasures and stories the land would hold. And you also might want to keep your eyes on the map to figure out where it's located. Which brings us to... Right. How to piss off a Sierra Leonean. Uh, isn't this the place with all the blood diamonds and Ebola? I don't know, aren't you from the place that killed cats because you thought they had the bubonic plague, but really it was rats, so you just made it worse by killing off their main predator? Uh, no, I'm from the place that thought drinking mercury was the elixir of immortality. Psh, get your failed historical panacea regions <laughs> right, dumb ass. Oh yeah, sorry, yeah, my mistake. That was like so 2002 and 2014. They've moved on and they're moving forward. Anyway, the map. The country is located in West Africa, bordered by Guinea and Liberia with uh, borders that yeah. are mostly yeah. made up of rivers and arbitrary lines, like the northernmost point, which is the flat 10th degree parallel. These borders make the country officially the world's roundest shaped country. The nation is divided into four provinces and one area, the western area, known as the Freetown Peninsula, where the capital and largest city Freetown can be found. Just across the Tagrin Bay, you find the largest and busiest airport, Lungi International, which is actually located across the bay from Freetown, but the two peninsulas are not connected via bridge, so most people arriving from abroad must hire a water taxi or take a helicopter their ride if they want to visit Freetown. Otherwise, there is okay. a new small regional airstrip, Hastings Airport, in the south side of the city that is set to help facilitate travel to Freetown. Freetown also holds the busiest shipping port, the Port of Freetown, which also sits on Africa's largest natural harbor. This is the most important gate of commerce and trade for the entire country as most exports and imports pass directly through this point. After Freetown, yeah. the second and third largest cities are Bo and Kanema, which also hold their own small regional airports as well. The country is further divided into 12 districts and 140 49 chiefdoms. The country used to have a common carrier rail line that went from Freetown to Daru, but was closed in 1974. And today, only a mineral transport rail line operates between the port of Papel to the Marampa iron ore mine. I'm curious, why would they shut down the, uh, I guess, the railroad? I guess, you know, just railroads in general, they just cost more, or there's just not enough traffic, I'm guessing, that goes through there. I mean, you know, they just wait, just easier to take a plane or how else do you like to drive there? Interesting. I don't really see, oh, I guess we're kind of far up uh, the roads, but I guess you just drive or take a uh, plane, okay. With future extensions to Tonkolili. The country has hundreds of islands and islets off their coasts, thanks to the serrated river tributaries. Many of these islands host luxury resorts like the Turtle Islands and the Banana Islands. The largest of these islands is Sherbro, sitting on the drainage of three mighty rivers, the Kitam, the Taya, and the Bagru. Fun fact, just keep in mind, this very narrow sand spit peninsula is cut off and shared on the southern border with Liberia, right at the mouth of the Mono River. Yeah, you guys know me, I love weird border anomalies. Part of the reason why I started this show, that and Bob Saget. Any Huang. Interesting side note I've gotten from travelers. If you want to visit Sierra Leone, your best bet is to just fly in and out. Although the country is a wonderful destination, the borders are notorious for having complications with foreigners entering or exiting. Here's my buddy Gus explaining. I traveled through West Africa solo for three months with no flights. And when I came to the border of Sierra Leone, I had some problems with corrupt police officers who tried to scam me to pay for fake vaccines, a cholera vaccine for $100, etc. It was an annoying start to a very beautiful trip through Sierra Leone, a beautiful country full of friendly people and some very beautiful beaches. So go. Yeah, beware of the wow. cholera vaccine requirement. That's not a requirement. They'll, they'll try to push, just be, just take note of that. Anyway, Sierra Leone, uh, I don't know, did I miss any other facts? So when you go there, uh, if they say you need a vaccine, uh, don't take it. Damn, that's scary stuff, man. Like, kind of being threatened to take a vaccine and like, I don't know, man, you don't know what's in that thing. Uh, 
you know, supposed to, they're trying to scare you to taking the vaccine. When, but then that makes you think, what was actually the vaccine? So, wow, maybe uh, whoever anyone people that lives there or has experience with this can let us know, uh, get more of an inside scoop on this. Man, that's some scary stuff. They had it. Just be, just take note of that. Anyway, Sierra Leone. Uh, I don't know. Did I miss any other facts? They had a dispute with Guinea over the town Yanga after the Civil War. Oh yeah, that. Turner's Peninsula is the longest stretch of uninterrupted and almost completely uninhabited beach in the country. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, less than ten percent of the roads are like paved. Sh sure. Yeah. You wrote these last-minute factoids in the script just to fill space before the notable place segments. Pretty much. And here we go. Some places of interest you might want to check out in case if you decide to visit someday might include St. John's Church, the Baitul Sabu Masjid and Freetown Central Mosques, cool. Peace Museum, the National Museum of Sierra Leone, Takugama nice. Chimpanzee Sanctuary, the Giant Cotton Tree of Freetown, the wow. Forts of Bunce Island, the Martello Tower, Fort Thornton, the National Railway Museum, so many beaches and island resorts like these. And I like the National Ra Ra Railway Museum. I guess that's why... Uh and they stop doing train rides because they're all in the museum. You know, there's old trains and they're probably, I guess, you know, just not out of date. And, you know, they'll probably make more money with them in the museum, right? But, yeah. And I like the forts and stuff, man. You guys know me with forts and castles. I mean, that stuff's amazing. So, at least you got some really cool stuff to go, go visit, you know, when you do go on vacation there. Railway Museum, so many beaches and island resorts like these. Nice. And one of the top spots, the Loma Mountains. And speaking of mountains, Sierra Leone has a very interesting land structure, which brings us to... <laughs> now with regards to land, Sierra Leone is just about as deep and true to West Africa as you can get. First of all, the country has generally four topographic regions. You have the coastal mangrove belt with low-lying swampy marshes at the ends of the rivers. A little further inland, you have the forested hill country. A little further, you have the upland plateau. And finally, the Loma Mountains in the east. Interestingly enough though, the Freetown Peninsula is the only place on the coast with an average elevation higher than the sea level to 100 meter range. These hills are called the Lion Mountains that extend 30 kilometers and at their highest reach almost 900 meters high. Geologists nice. speculate that the reasoning behind this could be partially factored by the ever so slight thrust fault line pushing west that curves through the western part of the country. This makes them the only significant coastal mountains in Africa between Morocco and Cameroon, which is why they were so highly noted upon European discovery. The highest point of the country though is Bintumani, part of the Loma mountain chain. In the mountainous area, you also find the largest inland body of water, Lake Sonfon, sometimes called Lake Tourism. From these mountains flow many of the hundreds of mighty rivers and tributaries that drain into the Atlantic, the main ones being the Moa, the Sewa, the Taya, the Little Scarces in the north, and the longest and largest river, the Roquel, that bisects the upper third of the country. Sierra Leone also lies entirely within the Guinea-Congolian bioclimactic zone of West Africa, which means it receives some of the highest levels of rainfall out of all countries in Africa, averaging about 80 to 120 inches annually, especially during the monsoon season between June and October. Yeah, lots of- oh, sh yeah, lots of water, which can be good and bad. Good because, you know, you need water to live. Bad though, because, you know, it can also give life to bad things like viruses. Yes, Sierra Leone was pretty much the epicenter of the 2014 Ebola virus outbreak. The situation was handled, and as of 2016, the country has been declared Ebola free. No more. All right, and with that, it's time for my triple shot of espresso nice. break with this mug that you can get at geographynow.com. Which means, uh, usually Noah comes in, but Noah is unfortunately busy this time. <laughs> Not gonna make it today. Maybe next time. So I don't know. Um, Hannah, <laughs> why don't why don't you fill in? Um, actually, I already have a segment, and I'm not willing to work overtime. So how about you just use this husband man of mine? He can do it. Okay, Ian, I guess you're in. Good luck. Hello. As a developing nation, most people in Sierra Leone are still quite dependent on subsistence agriculture with about two-thirds of the population. Nonetheless, their country is rich in mineral deposits such as titanium ores, bauxite, and of course diamonds, which alone make up about half of all mining products. The drainage basins of the Kono, Kenema, and Bo districts alone have the highest concentration of mines in the country with over 1,700. Now, we all know in the past, many of these diamonds played a dark role in the Civil War. I mean, they even made a movie about it. Today, however, uh, the Mines and Minerals Act of 2009 puts the Ministry of Mineral Resources in charge of management. They are a part of the extraction it. industry. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Man, I just didn't hear word, word of what he just said in the last 10 seconds now. The blood diamond, I was actually, before you even said it, I was going to bring up the diamond as soon as they were 
started with the diamonds. I'm like, is that from Blood Diamond? And he said it, so it's very interesting. That makes me want to go rewatch that movie now. <laughs> but anyways, I don't know why I just paused it for that. Here we go. Civil War. I mean, he even made a movie about it. Today, however, the Mines and Minerals Act of 2009 puts the Ministry of Mineral Resources in charge of management. They are a part of the Extraction Industries Transparency Initiative. Doing good so far, Ian. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate you. I'm not disappointed. In any case, Sierra Leone is growing fast, often ranking in the top three countries with the highest industrial production growth rate. They were number one in 2013 with an 88% growth rate. 88%! Nonetheless, the country still has many areas areas to address and work on, especially in the energy sector. Today, only about 20% of the country has access to regular electricity and about 10% alone is concentrated just in the Freetown Peninsula. In any case, it's time to move on to the animal section and with... Gary Harlow, everyone. With a tropical, lush, eco-region, Sierra Leone is the perfect place for life to flourish. Over 140 mammals, over 600 birds, and almost 70 reptile species. The country has over 20 national parks, including the largest ones, the Utumba, the Kangari Hills, and the Gola Forest Reserve. Now, although lions are found on the coat of arms, to this day, there are virtually no permanent lion prides <laughs> inhabiting Sierra Leone. In fact, the mammal they are most famous for are primate species, about 15 in total, including the olive and guinea baboons, gr green monkeys, and the national- The lions are like coat of arms. Does that have to do with like the British? Maybe I'll find out here coming up. Because I know a lot of, uh, a lot of coat of arms, you know, they have the lions on there because of the relationship with the British. And yeah, I mean, I, this might have nothing to do with it. And could be just because the lions are cool and they, they're just kind of like a symbol for strong and everything. But anyways, yeah. In title, including the olive and guinea baboons, gr green monkeys, and the national animal, the chimpanzee. Birds of all types nest and breed here too, like the African harrier hawk, iris, glossy starling, and the white-necked rock fowl. Don't forget, the rivers and mangroves are home to some of the most endangered species of the aquatic mammals, like the African manatee and above-ground pygmy hippos that can be found there as well. Do a, do a hippo sound. <laughs> that's, a, that's a hippo sound, right? Finally, you can <laughs> can find one of the largest butterflies. Should I do in a butterfly impersonation? Do, do a butterfly <laughs> The giant African swallowtail here with a wingspan that can reach about 25 centimeters. Thank you, Gary Harlow. You, you can leave now. Sweet. That's pretty weird, but okay. We're revoking your <laughs> visa. Thank you, Gary, and thank you, Ian. Unfortunately, Ian had to leave a little early, but we still got to finish this segment. Uh, who else do we got to fill in? I don't know. Oh um, maybe we need some... Uh, oh, hey, Jason on his one wheel is here. Look at that. Oh, uh, he's floating. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And with that, it's time to finish off the section like we always do. Food! Now, Sierra Leone <laughs> follows many of the same Western African styles of cuisine when it comes to dishes. Every meal usually comes with a star staple, and most common ones being rice and fufu. Common dishes you can expect might include things like res pop, benny cakes, dried kini, ground nut stew, tola stew, rice akara, stir-fried okra, potato leaf stew, egusi, and the national dish cassava leaf stew. They have okay. a lot of drinks like ginger beer and tobe, and the national beverage pollo, a fermented palm wine. It's also an aphrodisiac, so it'll get your juices flowing. Now, every country in Western Africa claims that they make the best jollof rice, but to give credit to where it's due, Sierra Leone did win best in taste for their jollof rice in 2019 in a DC blind taste test. So they won. They did it! Uh, nope! Uh. Oh, hell no. <laughs> Take it in, Sierra Leone. You've earned it. And you viewers have earned the next segment of this video the. Thank you, Mr. Jason. Whoa, look at him float. Now, I asked you guys, the Sierra Leonean geography peeps, what it means to be Sierra Leonean in your opinion, and here are some things you guys said. Investing and believing a great deal in education, which stems from a history of being nicknamed the Athens of West Africa. It also means preserving the concept of Sierra Leone as an ultimate home and always being noticeably proud to be Sierra Leonean. So I feel we're a nation looking forward rather than looking backwards. If we look backwards, it's more to learn from our past. Also, the people in Madikotsky, they also love, they loving and caring, you know? Then they're welcoming. If you know, Sinjawi come, you need to see like outsider and 
Yeah, that last guy, Hassan, he was speaking Creole, one of the official languages of the country. We're gonna talk about that later. In any case, here's the graph. First of all, the country has about 7.7 .7 million people and is one of three countries that was founded by freed slaves from the Americas. The country is made up primarily of 16 main ethnic groups. However, the largest ones are the Mende and the Temne, almost identical in population at about 32% each. The next largest groups are the Limba at about 8.5, the Kono at about 5.2, and the Koranko at about 4.5. The remainder of the population belongs to the other ethnic groups and tribes like the Fula, Susu, Kisi, Loko, and so on. And finally, a small percentage of Europeans and Asians wow. also exist, specifically a notable Bengali and Lebanese community, as many Bengali peacekeepers came over to assist in war times. They use the Sierra Leone Leone as their currency, they use the types DNG plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now, despite the ethno-linguistic diversity, the country has two official languages used for intercommunication, English and the more commonly used Creole, Creole. which is a Creole of English. Creole is essentially what unifies them. Here's Geography Tanya explaining a little bit. Kushe, Kushe in our language means hi, and we usually say kushe. like Kushe, Audi body. And if you directly translate it, it's uh, Audi body means how is the body? How is your body feeling? Audi body. So Kushe, okay. Audi body means hi, how are you? Thank you, Tanya. Here's Geography Lamrana speaking pure Creole. See how much you can understand. Mionim na Lamrana. Komot Freeton. With people like in talk say, what are we now for you? No go wrong pass you. It means say, whatever God don't mark for you, you no go pass you. So till we meet again, I say, Tata. Pretty interesting, right? You're like, hmm, I, I get some of that. Okay. That's how they play the game. In any case, Creole was started by the Creole people, whom forthwith are the descendants of repatriated former slaves that were brought back to the African continent by the British between the 18th and 19th centuries. Hence the name of the capital, Freetown. And just like Liberia. I mean, the Creole, I, I get like, you know, it, you might understand like one out of every 10 words. I got it, but like, ugh, makes it a lot easier when you have subtitles right there. But like, if you go there to visit and they're talking Creole, uh, you're probably not going to, probably not going to kind of get it unless, I mean, you could probably, you might be able to get by if you're just trying to do something a little simple. But a lot of people are speaking English anyway, so I don't think the, uh, the Creole, you know, learning the, you know, learning what Creole, you know, how to understand it would matter because most people seem to speak English. Excuse me, I think that's what he said. So I think, you know, someone knows you're an outsider coming in. I'm pretty sure they would just go with English and not speak in Creole, right? Yeah, right. Makes sense. Yeah, okay. <laughs> by the British between the 18th and 19th centuries, hence the name of the capital, Freetown. And just like Liberia, the new American black settlers had to kind of spend decades of dealing with the conflicts from the native tribes and people groups that were already living in the coasts and interior. Over time, they just kind of figured things out relatively well. They had a lingua franca, Creole, and here we are today. Anyway, faith-wise, somewhere around three quarters of the country claim to be Muslim, mostly Sunni, and the remainder are mostly Christian, mostly Protestant. And interfaith collaboration is very common. You'll see Christians feasting at Eid and Muslims getting presents on Christmas. Everyone generally gets along regardless of religion or ethnic group. Most domestic conflicts they've had in the past, including the Civil War, were centered around political ideology and control. The Sierra Leone Civil War was one of the craziest, weirdest, fastest regime switching, changing wars of all African history. It would take way too long to explain, but here's a very quick rundown. Hey, Joseph Momo. Yeah? You suck. <laughs> eh, he was a weak leader anyway. <laughs> Okay, let's negotiate and disarm you guys. Uh, you're still a commonwealth nation, so I still technically have the right to intervene. Finally, now let's build some beach resorts. In any case, the whole ordeal lasted about 11 years. It's a huge part of their story, but it's over. They've grown and they've moved forward. Today, they focus more on things that unify them as Sierra Leoneans. And I hope, I really do hope they have that moved uh, forward and things are really uh, prospering there. I know, I forget which other African country I did. Uh, and they kind of said the same thing, uh, you know, but the country moving forward in the right direction, you know, but then like I've, I've then I've also had comments, a couple of comments in the video saying that things are, you know, back to being bad. And, uh, yeah, that's unfortunate. I mean, this is, I guess this, I think this is like a newer episode, so probably not, I think it was one of the older videos that said that. And so that was kind of sad to hear, you know, that things weren't getting better in that country. I wish I could, you know, I, trying to remember i think it was on the east coast somewhere on the east coast of africa i'm trying to remember the name 
I can't remember the names. I'm sorry, second names. But anyways, yeah, I sure I really do hope that things are improving and moving in the right direction here. And they've moved forward. Today they focus more on things that unify them as Sierra Leoneans. And one thing that unifies them together is sports. So here's the sports part with art. You got a lot of this small mic. Like, does anyone else get a kick out of that? You have this like small mic that everyone's just holding. I kind of figured they'd get some kind of big mic eventually, you know, big microphone. It just seems like something to be easier to hold, you know, and look like more like, I guess, pleasing to the eye. But, you know, I guess that's what makes this, you know, funny, too, is the fact that they're still just using like one of those small mics that you clip onto a T-shirt. <laughs> I, I, I just think that's like, I can't help but look at that every time I watch a Geography Now video. Like The mic thing just stands out for me. Am I the only one who kind of notices that, you know, and like thinks like, why don't you guys have like a regular like a microphone that, you know, singers have? But anyways, yeah. Or like, you know, uh, like news shows have or whatever. Sports part with art. Woo! There is sports. So here's the sports part with art. Hey guys, I'm still up in Washington State. I'll be back in LA soon, be doing all those cool skits and stuff with Paul and the whole gang. It's gonna be super sweet. So let's get it's into it. Sweet. Now, because of the turbulent past of the Civil War, Sierra Leone hasn't exactly had the privilege of having time to polish up their athletics. Their national soccer or football team has played in international competitions like the African National Cup. Unfortunately, they had to forfeit their playoff spot in the 2000 African Nations Cup because of the Civil War. And the national stadium of the country being the Sieka Steven. Sieka? Sieka. Sieka Steven. The Sieka Stevens Stadium in Freetown, which hosts matches. In addition, cricket has grown in popularity and their home to. Mikael, what are you doing? Daddy's recording. <laughs> Thank you. And their home team made their debut in 2004 at the African Affiliates Championship. Some Americans of Sierra Leone descent have also been drafted into the NFL, like these guys right here. What's up? Hey, Dad, I'll be done in two seconds. Sorry. Pass by, Daddy. Pass by, Daddy. Otherwise, much of the Sierra Leoneans' remaining athletics lie within the fun recreational activities in the ocean. The numerous shipwreck sites off the coast offer great scuba diving. Sports fishing is a great pastime. I want to go there and I want to go scuba diving, except for wherever the sharks are. I'm sh scared of sharks. That is it. Sierra Leone, you rock, baby. Thank you. I think there's the sharks everywhere, right? I mean, if you go scuba diving, there's... Oh, it's the ocean. There's always going to be a chance that you run into a shark, which is one of the reasons why I probably will never go scuba diving. So, yeah. Anyways, yeah. Nice trying to scare sharks. That is it. Sierra Leone, Whee! you rock, baby. Thank you, Art. Yeah, some things in the country transcend ethnic distinctions. Nonetheless, each of the distinct ethnic groups in Sierra Leone do kind of have their own unique traits. And with that, it's time for Random Hannah to explain. And I'm back. There are many different people groups in Sierra Leone, but we are going to cover the biggest ones. The Mende, the largest group. What's fascinating is that the Gullah community of South Carolina in the USA are descended from the tribe and to this day still retain lots of the Mende Vi language in their Creole. Famous for their secret male and female societies called Poro and Sande, each society has secret passwords and rituals that essentially train adolescents into adulthood. Timne, they are kind of known for being the cash crop revolutionaries, as not only are they heavily invested in the cash crop industry, but one of the most famous kings, this guy, and this chief, played a huge role in history, especially during colonial time. Like the Mende, they also have secret societies, and during the ceremonies, they use some of the most elaborately decorated masks in all of West Africa. The Limba, considered the earliest indigenous people of the country, and speak a language completely unrelated to all the others. Because of their ancestral roots to the first inhabitants, they are often seen as great candidates for leadership. And historically, they played many roles in politics. Their spiritual home is Kakoya Village. And to this day, many Limba people make their pilgrimages back to the mountains through this village. Kono. These are the diamond people, living mostly in eastern Kono district, rich in diamonds. They are predominantly Christian and are related to the Mandika and Vai peoples that are basically descendants from the rich Mali empire. The Koronko people are distant cousins, but they now are predominantly Muslim. They live mostly 
in Savannah. Some speak French as well due to their proximity with Guinea. They migrated to Sierra Leone under the leadership of warrior Mansa Kama in the 17th century. But for what it's worth, we have to discuss the Creos. After colonies were set up, many of the Creos were sent and educated in the UK. Many even have English names and last names as well. In addition, many Creos have a little bit of European or Native American ancestry. They usually hold positions in government and are usually the most well-traveled individuals of the country, speaking the best English fluently. Okay, so that's the main people groups. Nonetheless, with so many intermarriages, the distinction between people groups often gets blurred. Unfortunately, <laughs> something that doesn't get blurred is Keith's music segment. Really? Rolling. Speeding. Sierra Leone loves music, and they love any excuse to play music. Much of the music mixes influence from their ethnic groups and religions. The two genres that Sierra Leone is known for pioneering would be palm wine and goombe. It was popularized in the 1950s by this dude. He took and rearranged Caribbean styles like Calypso. It mixes a lot of influence from traditional music of the crew people, and often uses Portuguese guitars that were introduced from early sailors. Goombe is a Creole music genre that uses the goomba, a square drum instrument that was actually introduced by the Jamaicans that were resettled in Sierra Leone. It was actually originally used as a form of communication during colonial times and later developed into an upbeat style that is used for everything from weddings to baptisms because, you know, Jesus. Oh. I'm, I'm just... <laughs> Here at Geography Now, we have the most low-budget setup <laughs> possible. Another famous genre would be boo-boo music, traditional to the Teme people. It actually started out as a music used in animus ceremonies, but later was readapted to Islamic processions during Ramadan. This guy, John Kanabe, known as the King of Boo-Boo, was the first musician to record boo-boo music. He modernized it with electrical sounds. Ooh, ah. He passed away in 2018, but his legacy lives on in Sierra Leone. All right, guys. Well, that's all I got for you. Go and listen to all these great African music. Also, if you're feeling like opening up thy wallet Rock and us. spending it thy money, <laughs> you can also buy a Keith shirt in the Geography Now store and wear it on your gorgeous physique. That's all. Thank you, Keith. Now, throughout this episode, we already kind of discussed the history of the country, but for the sake of saving time, we're just gonna bypass that and go to the notable people segment. <laughs> Some of the top famous people from Sierra Leone that you people, the Sierra Leonean geography people suggest we mention in this episode include Christian Cole, Madame Yoko, Francis Tiafo, Michaela de Prince, Eunice Barber, Idris Elba's father was Sierra Leonean, Isha Sese, Aminata Forna, Ishmael Bea, Kai Kamara, Talia Koroma, Amy Callan, and Isaiah Washington did a DNA test and his ancestry matched Sierra Leone. So it's very likely his ancestry came from there. He even went there and did a charity project. Now, after 20-ish minutes, it's time for the final segment of the episode, The... <laughs> So, like many other countries we've discussed, Sierra Leone has two different types of diplomatic outreach. Historical colonial ties and domestic tribal ties across the border. First of all, for one, outside of Africa, Lebanon and China are close friends, as many Lebanese people moved over even prior to Civil War times, and a growing noticeable Chinese community has been in the country as well. Both populations are highly integrated to the point where many speak Creole. In addition, as we mentioned, Bangladesh... Because China's kind of trying to take over, like, Africa not trying to take over Africa, but they're trying to have like show a big influence in Africa, you know. So it's kind of it's because the, they seem to be dipping into everything, you know. So it's gonna be kind of curious down the line, you know, how that all kind of pans out. But anyways. Both populations are highly integrated to the point where many speak Creole. In addition, as we mentioned, Bangladesh is also a close country. During Civil War times, many Bengali soldiers came as peacekeepers. The United Kingdom has always been close as well. There is still a lot of affection there, Aww. especially from the older Sierra Leonean community. The UK also played a very instrumental role during the Civil War and Ebola crisis by supplying lots of aid. In addition, many British people traveled to Sierra Leone to go on awesome. holiday. A little closer to home, Ghana and Nigeria are also close. As English-speaking partners, Nigeria also played a role in assisting during Civil War times. They have a street named after their president, although slightly controversial. Many Ghanaian politicians also went to Fura Bay for college, and in general, they just get each other. For Guinea, many people in the Temne and Fula tribes can be found in both of these countries and have close ties. Many of them intermarry as well, and in general, Guinea has always kind of played a role in Sierra Leone's diplomacy throughout the years, both socially 
and diplomatically as they are neighbors. When it comes to their best friend, I've had a lot of Sierra Leonean people tell me two countries might be the top candidates, Liberia and the Gambia. Now with Liberia, there's still a little bit of controversy, especially with their involvement in the civil war, and there might still be a little bit of a sour taste. However, they can't deny that they have such similar histories, especially with the Creoles and the Americo Liberians. Both countries have such similar roots in repatriated American former slaves recolonizing parts of Africa. Their foods and cultures are often very similar. People from both of these countries often marry each other, start families with each other, and overall, they get each other. For the Gambia, a lot of the Muslim Sierra Leoneans get along with, as the two have Muslim majority populations, both are English speaking, generally, and they have a deep respect for each other. Many people from Sierra Leone also fled to the Gambia during civil war times, and in general, they know that in the end, the Gambia will always be there for them. Aww. In conclusion, Sierra Leone is kind of like a Britishy version of Liberia, a country of African Americans brought back to Africa that somehow kind of had to figure things out and make a community. For what it's worth, the beautiful people and land are truly the diamonds of Africa. Stay tuned, Singapore is coming up next. Singapore. Sierra Leone. Wow, you guys, definitely interesting country and a rich history. And with, you know, it seems like a whole bunch of conflict, you know, there, but you guys are finally over it. Oh, well, at least I hope so. And, you know, things are looking on the up and up, right? Uh, so, yeah, there you have it, guys. Sierra Leone, let me know uh, if you've been there in the comments, you know, I guess, like, the cost of, like, vacationing there. And, like, you know, like, you know, and those seems like, as we talked to the Sierra Leone people, that they're really nice and welcoming. And, yeah, it'd be kind of cool to... Uh, I always think it'd be kind of cool just to hang out at a bar or like or go to a club, which I haven't gone to a club in like forever. But uh, I don't know, just to kind of mingle, you know, go to a foreign country and mingle with everyone and, you know, have, have some drinks. I just think that'd be a great time just going to all these different places, just mingling along, mingling with the people. Anyways, if I ever do go somewhere, I'll definitely make sure I say it on my channel so I can maybe meet up with people. Yeah, the whole, like, three people who watch me on this channel. But anyways, guys, please hit the like and subscribe button below. I really appreciate it. And, yeah, awesome. Awesome stuff here once again. And we're going to Singapore next. Yeah, hope you guys continue along. And if you're new to my channel, definitely go check out all the other uh, playlists and countries and all that cool stuff. I don't know why I'm trying to talk so fast because I'm not on the timeline. Anyways, peace. You guys have a good day and good night. I'm out of here.